Hello there! Before we back to mythology, I want to take you to the process behind my last video and talk about cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation after that. My commentaries is not directed towards original party like a Russian song, keep it in mind. But it's just a theme that kinda comes in mind when you think about someone talking about your culture, so let's begin our party. My parody video was a celebration. I had this art party because having normal party is nearly impossible now. Of course, I thought to make something when I heard the song back in 2016, but only recently I came up with a particular idea. Pandemic times is time when you have to get the best out of a moment, and if it means that I will jump in the snow with wet legs, let it be so. I got two birds with one stone celebrated myself and had fun, just because I can. And some who took monetization on the video, just because they can. So I sketched animatic, prepared props, got my cute K-pop gopnikish outfit and was ready to go. Post-processing was a pain, to be honest. But at least I had some fun with Blender for the cover. I wanted to implement as much cultural elements as possible and some shots came up at the last moment, during post-processing, when I ran out of footage. Haha. <laughs> I don't have acting experience and never participated in this type of media, so the parody was my first acting experience. I even tried to replicate folklore dances, although I don't dance. But the one scene, I always wanted to smash a mirror, and the revolution part was perfect for it. I waited for this moment many days, but when it came, I was so exhausted from being on hills all day that I just wanted to get it done as fast as possible. What an irony. And yes, I didn't break it from the first attempt. Overall, it was interesting. Creative process is not predictable for any media. You never know where it's going to take you. You have to trust the process and get things done. About the second part, our tea of the day. To say short, you miss a lot of fun without a cultural consultant. Only culture carrier is able to provide juicy inside info that will help to take the artwork to the new level. When the artwork about a certain culture isn't relatable to its native culture carriers, that means you have a lot of things to improve. For example, I can take my parody clip. The faceless doll that you see in the video isn't random. It is a Slavic ritual talisman doll. The practice of this doll exists since pagan Slavic times. They don't have faith because it's tied to Slavic belief that bad spirit can possess an object that has human facial features. Long back ago, kids wouldn't play with toys like Barbie. Barbie has facial features, therefore a bad spirit can possess it. Therefore a bad spirit can harm a kid. Slavic kids would play with faceless fabric dolls? Spasibo part from the video isn't random either. It is a reference to a painting Mother of the World by artist Nikolai Rerich, that painting on the screen. Those round metal boxes that you see at the chessboard are pain relief balms. It's called Vietnam Star or Balsam Zvezdichka in Russian. It's a huge part of Russian meme culture and a common item in the Russian household. The tea set in the end of the video called Madonna. It's a remarkable object in East European household. During Soviet era, this tea set was produced in East Germany and were considered luxury item in Soviet Union. It was such a desirable thing to have that people would smuggle it. And of course, if you have opportunity to get it, you are not going to use it in everyday life. It's just there for guests to see. And we finish my cultural reference tour. As you see, all those things are active parts of Russian culture, and it makes sense to include them to something that dedicated to Russian culture. Small details make a big picture, and it's up to you which picture you are going to create. One of those examples that didn't care at all about details is this TV show called Outside of the Vibe. I'm not going to cover characters or its lore, I'm just going to point out. This uh, show is set in Eastern Europe and of course it has some Soviet buildings, 
But guess what wrong with these buildings? They have balconies, but it's not windowed. Really? Really? It's always windowed. All balconies in Russia and post-Soviet space are going to be windowed. Go to the Google Maps, like panoramic view. You're going to see that 90% of the balconies on the street are going to be windowed. This window design also has its own personality. So it's like a balcony mosaic. In many households, this space is converted to an extra room or patio. Can you imagine a scene that they could make a typical East European balcony to develop characters, like it usually happens in real life? East European balcony is a home for a lot of drama. Well, at least they kept the benches by the entrance. And just extra piggy. Look at those textures. Even textures from textureheaven.com look better. Why did you made it? Reminder, this whole thing is not about party like a Russian song because it was painfully obvious that it was a joke, and I don't take it serious. This uh, blah blah scene is about the case where something is presented like inside info, while it's not, like non-windowed balconies. I rate them 1 out of 10. If an artwork presents itself as proper cultural representation, while it isn't, and has a function of speaking on behalf of a particular cultural community, it becomes a problem. You can't speak on community's behalf without involving this community at the first place. It should be common sense. It's plain and simple. Healthy cultural appreciation includes a consultant, a search, and proper collaboration with this culture. It is artistically modified, but it keeps the spirit. It reimagines, but keeps the vibe. There is nothing wrong with implementing modifications. The nature is change. However, Keep the core idea. Pay attention to what you plan to modify. I know, it sounds a bit confusing, because I literally say that modification is natural cultural phenomenon, and at the same time, I say, really watch what you modify, don't do that. Bear with me for some good examples. Now on the screen you see a character from Ever After High Show. It's a Baba Yaga character, and it's based on Slavic folklore character Baba Yaga. Check this adaptation out, it's, it's lovely, it has this uh, interesting design, but they kept the core. She's a witch, and she's quite independent, she lives by herself in the forest. She has powerful magical abilities, she has a quirky character. She doesn't really fit a standard, she travels in stupa, and she has a house of the chicken legs. Her costume here, it has this wicked rebel vibe, it has implemented folklore elements, it's quite asymmetric, and maybe it's not typical Slavic dress, but it's something that highlights her character. Bad example would be if an artist would replace her things that she travels in, stupa with a pot or something else, because she just travels in something, it doesn't matter. But they didn't. They kept those core characteristics. Her house with the chicken legs, which in this uh, cartoon, it's also her office, which is really cool. Heavily referenced Russian house architecture called Izba. It has this core vibe of wooden house style. And at the same time, it has some modifications. This is what healthy cultural appreciation looks like. Another good example, another Baba Yaga, this time from Smite. We see at the concept art, this Baba Yaga, she doesn't have a typical East European costume, but it's, it speaks a lot, it has a lot of uh, small folklore details, and she has this head jewelry on her forehead, it's a Slavic jewelry. She doesn't have a typical uh, East European haircut like braid, but this uh, design adds up to her personality. Also her stupa, it's also modified here, it's not wooden, it's more metal, but it's, it's not like a kitchen pot, it's not a rice cooker. It's a pot that she uses for her magical things and where she travels. It keeps the main purpose and it also has some folklore elements. The house with the chicken legs design is also great here. 
they kept silhouette of wooden architecture and they added some artistic uh, modifications but it's still it keeps the core it's not north american suburban house in slavic settings it's slavic elements in slavic settings which is right the last artwork in this uh, board of honor is uh, tv show chernobyl it's not documentary it has some things to improve, but I just want to highlight average Soviet citizens day-to-day -day life, like apartment scenes, some day-to-day -day habits, this scene where a scientist throws away a garbage with this little bucket and a lid, it's so relatable for someone who lived in Soviet Union, that is just great. If you can do it good, do it good, no unwindowed balconies. Don't remove details that make something authentic. Help to keep the culture alive without ruining it. You need cultural consultant on the art project, because the culture carrier is able to point out those important details that you shouldn't dare to touch. This is healthy recipe of cultural appreciation. You got it. Use it wisely. All in all, I can give more examples, but I won't. It's your homework for today. Find toxic cases of cultural appropriation of Russian or Slavic culture and write it in the comments. Internet is full of this crap. I will review your homework and make video about it later, so subscribe to see the part 2. Bye!